My name is Claudia de la Cruz. I am very honored to welcome you on behalf of the People's Forum to the Space. I am very happy that we're having this gathering, that we're having these very important conversations that are not only of impact to the Cuban people, but are also of impact to the world. Because for as long as Cuba is not left to build its revolution, the rest of the world is not free to build our processes, whether we are in the Bronx, whether we are in the South of the United States, or whether we are in the global South. And so we are really pleased to be able to build these bridges of solidarity, because ultimately solidarity is the tenderness of the people. That is where our tender tenderness lies. In a moment where the United States and its imperialist force attempts to continue to maintain its dominance over the world politically, economically, militarily. It is very important for people of consciousness. People of consciousness, we don't have to be more than that. People who want to defend life, the life of human beings and the life of the planet to stand together and defend life. And what the US blockade on Cuba has meant is death. It's misery, it's pain. It has cost the Cuban people over 60 years, $800 billion. And then the United States has the audacity, has the disrespect to talk about the Cuban revolution as a failed revolution. The United States has strangled the Cuban economy. And it has not allowed for the Cuban revolution to flourish the way in which it's meant to flourish. You have access to health, but can't get equipment for medical needs. You have access to education, and yet you can't access necessary technical equipment like laptops for students. The United States has done that. The government of the people of the United States has historically strangled the economy and the possibility, the hope of the Cuban people. And so we don't have to be a revolutionary. We don't even have to be a socialist. We just need to be people of consciousness to understand that there has been a war waged against the Cuban people. And as people of peace, as people of love, as people who understand solidarity to be the strongest bond between people, it is our need and is imperative for the salvation of the world to fight against the blockade, to fight against sanctions, and to make sure that we hold any government, whether it's Trump's or Biden's, accountable for death in this world. And so it is with the utmost pleasure and honor that I welcome you all to this space, and that I hope that when we leave here, we're able to multiply this message. Bloqueo no, Cuba sí. Cuba sí, bloqueo no. Let that be our prayer when we leave this space. Let this be our chant when we leave this space. And let it take fore and center, front and center, in everything we do, every day. Because our connection to the Cuban people is deeper and bigger than our connection to the US government. me. I got all excited. I'm a preacher too. I'm going to do it right. So if go past this for peace. And I'm going to do a proper introduction. So just wait for it. If go past this for peace. The first time I went to Cuba in 1997. It was a yellow bus. And there was this man this man that I was like, but you're a reverend, who talked all sorts of things in very powerful forms and was yay high. And his man was Reverend Lucius Walker, long live. And I didn't quite understand why he was so powerful in his speech. 
And I remember being told that when you hold the truth, you have power. And he held the truth, the truth of love, of solidarity, of bridges amongst people, and taking stands for what was just. And I always heard about this daughter who ultimately, grand stature, great commitment, great organizer, great sister to me and many. Her name is Gail Walker. And she's taken on not only a legacy, but her responsibility to move forward an agenda that is a people's agenda. That is the agenda of love, solidarity, and building bridges and connections. And she's taken a lot of ish for it too. And so I appreciate the opportunity of welcoming to the stage, to the space, as always, my sister, my friend, my comrade in arms and love, Rev, Rev doctor, pastor, minister, activist, organizer, educator, mentor, Gail Walker. Place there, we have with us Teresa Amarea Bouye, who is the uh, general secretary of the National Committee of the Federation of Cuban Women. Um, she is a member of the uh, the Cuban uh, uh, Parliament, the, uh, the Council of State, and we're honored that she's here with us, uh, along with our other sisters from um, FMC, Asmalda Hernandez Belleno, who is a member of the National Secretariat of the uh, FMC, Federation of Cuban Women, um, and really with the focus on international relations, and our dear sister Gretel um, uh, Marante Rosette, who is a... Uh, a very important um, member of the uh, the staff of the FMC and focused again on international relations and we're grateful that you all are here. We're looking forward to hearing um, all of what you have to share with us. Uh, it's an honor for us to always have friends uh, directly from the island. So bienvenidos, welcome and thank you for uh, for all that you will be doing throughout this weekend to help enlighten us. Um, I just want to say a couple of quick things, uh, just that um, we're here not only to express our solidarity, of course, with Cuba, but also uh, to learn. We, um, last year on a caravan, uh, Ambassador, we had a, a, a um, theme, Cuba Lights the Way. And that is very, I think, very, very profound. Cuba is a shining example, a shining beacon. And that's why you, um, you see so many people here and so many people that are joining us online, so many people who can't be here in New York but want to hear directly from our guests um, from Cuba to learn, to understand, and to um, find ways to really solve some of the, the pressing issues that we're battling with here in the United States. So thank you just for being you and for being the example that you represent. You. Prior to the post um, of Ambassador, uh, um, Ambassador uh, Cuesta, and Ambassador Pedrosa served as permanent representative to the United Nations office uh, at Geneva and other uh, international organizations in Switzerland. At the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he served as Deputy General Director for Multilateral Affairs and International Law. Uh, a lifelong diplomat, the um, ambassador also served in Kenya, as well as permanent representative to the United Nations Environmental uh, Program, UNEP, and the United Nations Human Settlements Program, or UN Habitat, in Nairobi. Uh, bottom line is that we have a seasoned a diplomat, but also a friend, someone who is generous with his time and his uh, expression of, of support and solidarity and we are blessed and honored to have you not only here with us uh, in New York, but also with us here today uh, to share with um, the, the community that is gathered as we begin um, today's uh, conference. So please join me in welcoming Ambassador Pedro Prados. On behalf of the permanent mission of Cuba to the United Nations, I wish to convey our warmest greetings and esteem for making these days of fraternity and friendship towards Cuba possible. We appreciate the countless expressions of sensitivity and humanism, which we highly value, and we show the desire of broad sectors in this country to strengthen ties with Cuba 
and to put an end to all the hostility towards our nation. You will have the opportunity to exchange views on the fight against COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, and the advancement of women. These are topics of almost importance and in which Cuba is making gigantic efforts to reach standards on par with the most developed nations despite the unjust siege imposed on us. The panel discussion on issues relating to the advancement of women and gender parity will count with the presence of Comrade Teresa Marelle Secretary General of the Federation of Cuban Women amongst the panelists as well as all the members of this organization that emerged as a fruit of the revolution. And without its contribution, it would not have been possible for Cuban women to reach the leading role they play in our society today. Nowadays, the Federation of Cuban Women is promoting even broader rights for women through the National Program for the Advance Advancement of Women as well as through the new draft family code, which has been debated by our population in an exercise of broadly participatory democracy. My dear friends, today more than ever, the support we receive from, your, from you gains a special significance to us. Cuba is under a siege never seen or heard of. During the administration of President Donald Trump, a vicious attack was launched against the well known process of improvement of relations between the two countries undertaken under the administration of President Obama. Since then, the US policy towards Cuba has sought by all means to suffocate the Cuban economy. For this purpose, it resorts to the application of a wide range of unilateral coercive measures, some of them unprecedented. To mention just a few examples, we are talking about the international persecution of fuel supplies to our country, the intimidation and imposition of penalties on those banks and financial entities that would operate with Cuba, the implementation of cruel restrictions of, on transfer of remittances from the US to Cuba, the roadblocks to travel between both countries which has considerably affected Cuban families. By what logic could the idea of inflicting direct harm on children, parents and grandparents through measures like this be understood? What inhumane policy is that one that seeks to divide families and try to make an entire people surrender due to shortages? It should not be forgotten that during the four years of the Trump's term in office, over 240 measures were adopted against Cuba, including those that tightened the blockade. In addition to those already mentioned, others stand out, such as the full implementation of the Helms Burton Act to expand the extraterritorial application of the blockade, and even the unbelievable and slanderous inclusion of Cuba in the list of states sponsors of terrorism drawn up unilaterally by the State Department. What makes the affirmation on slot against Cuba even more abominable is the context in which it was launched. Once the COVID-19 pandemic spread globally and as, it, and as it began to devastate the health system and economies of all countries, the former U.S. government saw this as an opportunity to further aggravate the effects of the blockade and the suffering of the Cuban people. Thus, COVID-19 pandemic became an ally in the, in the policy of aggression against Cuba at a time when the world needs more brotherhood and more solidarity than ever. The hostile actions reached such a point that they prevented people and solidarity organizations around the world from sending donations and medical supplies to target the COVID-19. There are no terms to describe how despicable this policy is. Unfortunately, the current democratic administration in the US 
has not brought about any change in their policy, in the U.S. policy towards Cuba. Despite his campaign promises, President Joe Biden has not changed an inch the burden of the blockade, even keeping immutable all the measures taken by his predecessor. Instead of fostering a change and cooperation in the best interests of both countries and of the region, the current U.S. government has opted to intensify a campaign of internal destabilization in Cuba, encouraging a matrix of false public opinions through digital platforms and allowing the blockade to continue to wear down the Cuban society. Friends of Cuba, last February 3rd, marked 60 years since the official promulgation of the United States economic, commercial, and financial blockade of Cuba. Through the signing of a decree by President Kennedy on the same day, 1962. Over the years, the blockade has toughened and expanded with the adoption of subsequent legislations and new regulations. Therefore, we reach this shameful anniversary with a much more intensified blockade, which reinforces as the lengthiest and most comprehensive system of unilateral cohesive measures applied against any country. How many more years will the Cuban people be forced to endure from this cruel policy? To what extent, to what extent will immorality and insensitivity reach in order not to understand that this blockade causes incalculable damage to human beings? At this juncture, the friends of Cuba in the United States and in other parts of the world represent an indispensable pillar for the Cuban people in their resistance and a struggle for dignity. We know that you are advocating in your respective communities for justice to be served in the face of our demands and are calling with resolution for the immediate end of the infamous blockade. For this and much more, we owe an eternal gratitude to all of you. Dear friends, to conclude, I wish to reiterate that the Cuban people and its revolution will continue to defend with determination our right to be sovereign. In spite of the blockades and aggressions, we will continue to resist. Despite pandemics, we will continue to persevere. Our efforts have allowed us to feed of developing three hope. Our efforts have allowed us to develop three homegrown vaccines and two vaccine candidates against COVID-19 under extremely adverse circumstances. No matter how huge challenges can be, we can overcome them because Cuba is not alone. We wish you fruitful deliberations during the important conference. We know it will be a successful event. I thank you all very much. We are centering women. We are centering the role that women play in Cuba, and we are centering the solidarity that women in the United States can play in terms of building solidarity with our Cuban sisters, but the role that women can play in this country in terms of lifting the U.S. blockade. And that is why U.S. Women in Cuba collaboration has been doing our work for a little bit more than 20 years in the United States, building relationships with the Federation of Cuban Women. And I want to say Gretel has been a godsend to our work. Uh, to solidify once again our relationship with the Federation of Cuban Women. I want to give her a hand. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. So, you know, that is why U.S. Women in Cuba collaboration was formed back in the early 2000s to build that solidarity because Cuban women and the Federation of Cuban Women have been such an inspiration to our work. And as we face the conditions in our country in terms of women's rights, in terms of LGBTQ rights, we get our inspiration from the Federation of Cuban Women. If only we had a national organization that represented almost 80% of our country, 
we could change US foreign policy, we could lift the blockade, we could do unimaginable things if we had that power in this country. So uh, US Women in Cuba Collaboration has been doing this work um, for almost two decades. Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, the Cuba and the Bolivarian Alliance Issues Committee, which I am the co-chair with Dr. Lenny uh, Via Gomez Reeves, who could not be here today, uh, has the oldest women's peace organization in the world, over 100 years old. And we have been doing our work in WILF, building solidarity, working around the world to help lift the blockade. And uh, since we've been doing that work for 30 years. So un unfortunately, Jan Strout was supposed to be uh, chairing this panel. So you're going to have to <laughs> bear with me and look at me for four hours. <laughs> um, and so I'll be chairing both panels. Uh, t this morning and this afternoon. Uh, but we, Jan Strout is uh, going to be available to do our welcome to the Federation of Cuban Women and all of you uh, via Zoom. Um, I do want to say I want to dedicate these panels to Alicia Jarabko. You know, we miss her so much, such a strong woman. And as Ike said, uh, she, le she leaves us here, but she leaves us with such inspiration and such work she did in her short life. The other woman who I have held deep in my heart, um, and her name is Fifi Bocourt, who I met uh, many, many years ago. She was a leader in La Guanera in Cuba, and she always told me, and I remember her words, and those words resonate deeply with me, is that she loved the revolution because the revolution loved her. And the revolution loves all of you, and that's why you are here today. One of the One most, most impressive, impressive of the many outcomes of these UN conferences on women in 1995 is the Beijing Platform for Action, a 12-point global action agenda that implements the UN Women's Rights Treaty known as CEDAW, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. CEDAW defines what constitutes discrimination against women and girls broadly to include sex-based dis distinctions, exclusions, and restrictions that keep all those who identify as women and girls from enjoying their human rights to safety, economic security and justice, and health and well-being as well as fundamental freedoms. And CEDA highlights that culture, stereotypes, and beliefs shape gender roles and calls for proactive measures to address these concerns. And specifically that yes, the personal is political, that is marriage and family life, thus Cuba's family code. I wish I could see a raise of hands outside of the chat for those who know and work to advance this CEDAW international law. But alas, the United States is the only so-called developed democracy in the world which is not ratified. Cuba, however, was one of the first nations to ratify CEDAW in 1980, after adopted by the UN in 1979, to use this Beijing platform for action to implement this women's human rights action agenda and recognize its importance through the FMC leadership and organizing at the grassroots level through their five-year plans, which included development of the family code and CINESEX, among many other accomplishments. We are here today because of the important U.S.-Cuba Normalization Conference, as well as the annual Global Feminist and Women's Human Rights Meetings of the U.N. Commission on the Status of Women and gatherings of its Grassroots Activist Forum over two weeks ending March 25th. Right now in Cuba, women's rights advocates led by the Federation of Cuban Women and many more have created through education and organizing at every level of Cuban society, exemplary models and realities of advancing basic human rights for the diversity of women and girls and the LGBTQIA plus communities in policies, programs, and in the Cuban constitution 
to advance gender and all equity. Feminists in the United States can only dream about but still work hard to achieve some of these human rights of Cuban women, including constitutional equality in the law, ratification of CEDAR, political representation in the US Congress still hovering below 25% and for indigenous and women, women of color far worse. Reproductive health and justice through healthcare as a human right, abortion access, which only requires this procedure being performed by a doctor in a, doc in a hospital in Cuba, the same as giving birth, and comprehensive age-appropriate sex education, economic security through pay equity, paid family and sick leave, social safety nets from cradle to grave as human rights, plus guarantee of education as a human right from pre-K elementary school to higher education, leading to most elimination of segregated occupational and training opportunities for women, and especially Cuban people of African descent that have been open to all. One key policy now under much discussion is the updating of the Families Code, a major effort to create the sharing of care, rights, responsibilities, affection and solidarity in recognition of all Cuban families. Why is this so important here in the United States? I'll say, share a little bit more about the fact that I live and work in Montana that now is fully controlled by fundamentalist religious right, who are mostly authoritarian, misogynistic, white supremacists, gun-loving, homophobic elected representatives. Take a breath. Many of us in Montana were just feeling recovered from the 2021 legislative session, which passed numerous punitive and harmful bills to basically eliminate the human right to abortion, medically accurate sex education, food, housing, and other economic security supports, equal pay and child care, family and sick leave, voter rights, especially suppressed, to indigenous peoples and students, plus especially grievous attacks on trans youth and the LGBTQ two-spirit community. Then the tidal wave nationally of anti-LGBTQ bills started rolling in from states like Florida, Texas, Idaho, and Arkansas. We know that this cruel attempt to roll back basic rights for LGBTQ people and families specifically trans youth and their parents, was meant to create panic and shame. That's why Cuba's family code is so important and so needed to educate, inspire, and envision another way to be as families and communities founded on human rights, solidarity, equality, and the elimination of patriarchy. In closing, with these positive changes happening in Cuba, we who seek human dignity and rights, equality and equity, racial and gender justice, peace and solidarity, we have an opportunity to re-envision who we are and what we can build as human rights and feminist activists in the United States and to lift the brutal US government blockade of Cuba. En cuanto las organizaciones de masas hemos llegado a la conclusión de que se requiere revitalizar su accionar en todas las esferas de la sociedad y actualizar su funcionamiento. Es preciso rescatar el trabajo en la base, en la fábrica, en la granja, en las cuadras y barrios de defensa de la ciudad y en la lucha contra las manifestaciones del delito y la indisciplina social. Es necesario elevar la combatividad de intransigencia revolucionaria y fortalecer su aporte a la labor ideológica, el enfrentamiento a los planes subversivos del enemigo y a la creación y consolidación de valores. Continúa el apoyo desde el partido a la labor de la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas y otras instituciones 
en la defensa de los derechos de la mujer y la denuncia de la violencia de género. La Federación de Mujeres Cubanas, esta organización que aspira a continuar siendo auténtica, se repensó y sin dudas acudió al repaso científico de expertas que con sus miradas de mujer nos condujeron a los diálogos con la membresía femenina de todos los sectores. Devino en una mezcla de fortalezas, amenazas, pero con la convicción de que seguíamos con aptitud ofensiva y estando en el centro de las cubanas. ¿Qué decir del accionar en las comunidades con situaciones de vulnerabilidad, donde nuestro activismo se engrandece en el enfrentamiento a la COVID-19 y la guerra mediática desatada contra nuestra isla? La solidaridad como valor esencial de los cubanos una vez más presente en las familias. La fuerza de un país en dosis de Agdala y Soberana que para orgullo patrio, cuánto de Vilma hay en ellas. Los nuevos métodos y estilos de trabajo nos conducen a tocar la espiritualidad de las personas para lograr en verdad la motivación intrínseca de nuestra gente. El programa para el adelanto de la mujer, sin lugar a dudas, resume el sentir y la voluntad política del Estado cubano y constituye la piedra angular en el desarrollo de políticas a favor de las mujeres, al tiempo que da continuidad al avance y desarrollo de la igualdad de género. La Estrategia Integral de Prevención y Atención a la Violencia de Género y la Violencia en el Escenario Familiar evidencian total correspondencia con lo plasmado en la Carta Magna, donde la voluntad es siempre tolerancia cero. La organización femenina, atemperada a la Cuba actual y creando oportunidades, promueve desde las casas de orientación a la mujer y a la familia la preparación y capacitación de quienes acuden a este espacio. Los cuidados constituyen un derecho y un deber para todas las personas. Conciliarlos con los proyectos de vidas personales, la convivencia familiar, constituye un fuerte desafío. Cuba y su pueblo han inspirado siempre a la solidaridad internacional. Los puentes de amor que en los últimos años han escrito nuevas páginas se evidencian también en los encuentros sostenidos con organizaciones femeninas amigas y con las que integran la Federación Democrática Internacional de Mujeres. Es momento de citar las palabras de Vilma cuando expresó «Solo el socialismo puede garantizar tales realizaciones y sentimos el ineludible deber de brindar cada día un aporte a esta grandiosa obra». Más que nunca nos hace falta hoy la fuerza y la moral de nuestras mujeres. Así piensa él, así pensamos nosotras también. Jamás le fallaremos, porque Cuba vive en las mujeres. Buenos días, hermanas, hermanos. Good morning, uh, sisters and brothers. Tengo un gran reto. I have a big challenge. Hacer que la traducción logre transmitir lo que yo quiero transmitir. To uh, make sure that the translation expresses what I want to express. Ese reto nunca será mayor que el que ustedes emprenden cada día en la lucha contra el bloqueo. Uh, that uh, challenge will never be greater than the challenge you face in your struggle against the U.S. blockade against Cuba. Dice nuestro hermano hay que hay límites de movimiento para nuestros compañeros en la misión diplomática. Uh, Ike says that there is limitations on the movement uh, of our compañeros at the Cuban mission at the UN. Pero nunca habrá límites para la hermandad. But there will be never any limits on uh, fraternity. Nunca habrá límites para la solidaridad y el cariño que ustedes expresan por el pueblo cubano. There will be never any limits on the solidarity and affection that you express towards the Cuban people. Entonces voy a asumir el reto. So that's the challenge. Ahí trajimos una presentación. Uh, we brought a, a presentation. Por favor, no la, no la ponen. En esa presentación tratamos de transmitir ¿En qué consiste la lucha de las mujeres cubanas en este momento? ¿Cuáles son nuestras principales misiones? In, in that presentation, we try to present what are the main struggles of Cuban women today uh, and their missions. Y comenzamos explicándoles que contamos con un programa nacional para el adelanto de las mujeres. 
and we begin by saying that we have a uh, uh, we have presented a national program for the advancement of women. Una norma jurídica que cumplió un año el 8 de marzo y que sale como un decreto presidencial. Um, and this is a, a legal measure that has been in force for uh, now one year since uh, March 8th, and it is a, a presidential decree. Que resume el sentir y la voluntad política del Estado cubano para el adelanto de las mujeres. And it uh, resumes the feelings and the political will of the Cuban state in terms of the advancement of women. Es una hoja de ruta. It is a, um, a guide, a roadmap. Pero entiéndase que para las cubanas, but for, uh, you should understand that for Cubans, su primer programa de igualdad, the first, the very first program for equality, es la propia revolución. Is the revolution itself. Imágenes de las mujeres cubanas en acción. Uh, the image of uh, Cuban women in action. Puede pasarla. Este programa pasa. Este programa nacional tiene siete áreas de especial preocupación. This national uh, program has seven areas of particular attention. El empoderamiento económico de las mujeres. The economic empowerment of women. Los medios de comunicación. A means of communication. Para que logren reflejar en toda su dimensión las historias de vida de las mujeres. To reflect in all the uh, avenues of, of life the uh, la número la educación, Ed la prevención y el trabajo social. Education, prevention and social work. Podremos tener muchas leyes. We can have many pero laws. si no logramos educar y sensibilizar, no avanzaremos lo suficiente. But if we can't educate and raise consciousness, then we cannot make it progress. La cuarta área, el acceso a la toma de decisiones. The fourth area is access to decision making. Legislación y derecho, uh, marco normativo para el tratamiento y atención a la violencia de género. Legislation and law, a normative or policy making um, framework for treatment and attention regarding uh, gender violence. La salud sexual y la salud reproductiva. Uh, sexual health and reproductive health. Y las estadísticas y las investigaciones. And statistics and research. Este programa se coordina al más alto nivel gubernamental. Pueden pasarla. Um, this plan is being coordinated at the highest government level. Y constituye una gran oportunidad. And is a big opportunity. Para monitorear los avances en materia de género. To monitor advances in uh, the area of gender. Lo que convierte al programa en una de las principales herramientas para la garantía de los derechos humanos de las mujeres. Uh, which uh, makes the program into one of the main tools or instruments for guaranteeing human rights for the uh, progress of women in our country. Para la implementación de este programa. For the implementation of this program. Se creó un grupo de trabajo temporal. We created a temporary uh, working group. Presidido por la primera por la viceprimera ministra headed by the first uh, prime minister y acompañado por la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas uh, together with the support of the Cuban uh, Women's Federation y está integrado además por otros organismos and it includes also other bodies que les corresponde llevar a la práctica el programa uh, involved in carrying out and enforcing this program esto nos permitió crear comités de género, la última. This allowed us to create um, commissions on gender. Y estrategias de género en estos organismos. And strategies regarding gender in, in, in these bodies. Y tiene el propósito de seguir impactando en la vida de las mujeres. And the goal is to continue having an impact in the lives of women. Por ejemplo, en el empleo. For example, in employment. Hemos crecido. We have grown de un 37 a un 39% total de empleo femenino. We have, uh, the, 
percentage of women in employment has grown from 37 to 39 percent. La tasa de participación es de 54,9%. Uh, the women's labor participation rate is 54.9%. Y en el trabajo por cuenta propia, hoy somos mujeres, son mujeres el 35%. And in self-employment, women represent 35% of those jobs. De las personas ocupadas en la economía, el 95%. Of those occupied or employed in the economy, women represent 95%. De los que tienen nivel superior o medio superior. Of those uh, having achieved the high or middle level uh, uh, education, th those are women. Lo que nos ubica en una situación ventajosa. Which puts us in a very advantageous position. Para acceder a empleos de calidad. To uh, have access to quality jobs. Además, el 67,4% del personal de educación uh, also 67.4% of personnel in education son mujeres are women. El 70% de los jueces profesionales y fiscales más more, del 70% More than 70% of professional judges and prosecutors El 62% de los médicos 62% of doctors y el 64 de los que prestan servicios en otros países. And 64% of those that are involved in um, international collaboration abroad. Según un informe de la Organización Mundial de la Propiedad Intelectual. According to a report by the World Organization on Intellectual Property. Cuba ocupa el primer lugar. Cuba is in first place. De mujeres inventoras. In terms of women inventors. Con un 53%. With uh, 50%, 53%. Entonces la traducción me va, me va haciendo bien el trabajo, ¿eh? So, okay. <laughs> un so, aplauso para el traductor. <laughs> y después me lo tendrán que dar a mí. <laughs> la, to, en la toma de decisiones. In, the, in decision making. Recuerden que habíamos dicho que era un área de especial atención. Remember, uh, I had said this is an area of particular attention being uh, placed. El 51,6% de los cargos del Estado y el gobierno. 51.6% in uh, positions of the uh, responsibilities in the government and the state. Están ocupados por mujeres. Is made up of women. Y en la Asamblea Nacional del Poder Popular. And in the National Assembly of in the Parliament, the National Assembly of People's Power, representamos el 52.3%. We represent 52.7% of, uh, of those in Parliament. Y en el Consejo de Estado, and in the Council of State, es el 52.3. It's 52.3% who are women. En las asambleas municipales del Poder Popular. In the municipal assemblies of people's power. A nivel local. On the local level. Son el 54%. Women represent 54%. De los que ocupan las presidencias y las vicepresidencias. Of presidents and vice presidents. En las asambleas municipales. In the municipal assemblies. Representan el 54,35%. Uh, they're 54 percent. Y el 37.5 por ciento son los intendentes. And 37.5 percent of the local mayors are women. Este es un cargo que se introdujo con la implementación de la nueva constitución de la república. Uh, this is a new uh, position in government that was created with the adoption of the new constitution. ¿Qué más estamos haciendo para lograr el empoderamiento de las mujeres? What else are we doing to advance the empowerment of women? Acabamos de aprobar la apertura de casitas infantiles en centros laborales. We have just begun to open what's known as the casitas infantiles in workplaces. Casitas infantiles is like um, daycare centers. Menos mal okay. que hay muchos traductores. Uh, fortunately, we have many translators here. Es como una extensión de los círculos infantiles que tenemos en Cuba. It's like an extension of the existing child care centers that we have in Cuba. Pero para que funcionen en los centros laborales. But they uh, function or they operate in the workplace itself. 
y le presten ese servicio a quienes trabajan en esos lugares. And they provide services to those working in, in those jobs. Esta es una de las mayores demandas que hacen hoy las mujeres cubanas. This has been one of the greatest demands of Cuban women. Mujeres empoderadas, Empowered women, incorporadas al empleo, uh, that, that are involved in jobs, doctoras en ciencias, uh, doctors in sciences, necesitan fortalecer esa corresponsabilidad en los cuidados. They need uh, strengthening those co-responsibilities in uh, on the job. Hemos también implementado we, un proyecto. We have also implemented a, a project que conocemos como Espumas, that is known by the abbreviation Espumas, que ya presta servicio en 93 comunidades, which is providing services already in 93 communities, que además de ofrecer empleo a las mujeres, that offers jobs to women, acerca el servicio de lavandería a la comunidad, also uh, provides or facilitates laundry facilities for women, for families. Acabamos de aprobar también en el Consejo de Estado well, we also just in the of State, el decreto ley de la maternidad the decree law on, uh, maternity rights, de la trabajadora for women workers, y la responsabilidad de las familias. And family responsibility. Yo sé que ustedes como conocedores de Cuba I know that you as, uh, being knowledgeable about Cuba ya están apreciando lo novedoso de este proyecto. You can appreciate how new uh, and groundbreaking this work is. Desde el título. Uh, just from the title itself. No es solo para las mujeres. It's not only for women. Sino que incorpora a los padres, a las abuelas, a los abuelos, no solo a las trabajadoras del sector estatal. Um, in, in incorporates uh, not only women but fathers it includes uh, incorporates uh, grandmothers grandfathers and not only in the uh, state sector sino también a las familias del sector no estatal but also families uh, employed in the non-state sector e incorporamos también a las estudiantes we also involve uh, students Women, es decir, que las estudiantes también tendrán acceso a esa licencia de maternidad. The women students also have access to uh, maternity leave. El Ministerio de Educación entonces aprobó las normas y procedimientos para el otorgamiento a los círculos infantiles. So the uh, Ministry of Education also approved uh, norms and procedures for uh, granting um, for the establishment of uh, child care centers, priorizando el tratamiento, uh, giving priority to the treatment or asumir with, mm -hmm. a las madres con niños que presentan necesidades educativas especiales, um, for um, guaranteeing attention to mothers with children who have uh, per, uh, special educational needs, a las que tienen dos hijos o más, for uh, mothers with two or more children y a las estudiantes. And for women students. Es decir, que hay prioridad para las madres, para las familias que tienen varios hijos. That is, we're giving priority to mothers, to women who have several children. Y además las estudiantes. And also um, female students. Seguimos. Entonces, aprobamos también. We also approve. Miren qué interesante. Uh, uh, qué revolución la how, que tenemos que defender. You can see how interesting, what kind of revolution that we have to defend. Acabamos de aprobar también. We also just approved. Cuando la asamblea aprobó el presupuesto, incorporó presupuesto. When the assembly approved the, uh, the budget. Para otorgar una bonificación de un 50%. It included a, an extra payment of 50% a las madres trabajadoras to mothers to working mothers que tienen tres hijos o más who have three or more children para el pago de los impuestos for payment of personal income sobre tax. los ingresos personales el pago de impuestos sí. sobre ingresos personales and payment of personal ah, in yeah. income tax Ahí. yo entiendo el español pero el inglés no <laughs> Entonces I, lo había terminado y yo creía que no lo había dicho. <laughs> se actualizó y se puso en vigor. We updated and implemented. 
un acuerdo del Consejo de Ministros an agreement by the Council of Ministers que beneficia uh, to benefit con soluciones habitacionales uh, and provide housing solutions a madres de tres hijos o más uh, to women with three or more children es decir, el Estado that is, le otorga el dinero the state provides the money o le compra casas or buys a home regaladas for free a las madres que tienen tres hijos o más menores de 17 años or mothers who, uh, with three or more children who are um, 18 years or, or younger beneficiadas hasta el momento 6,000 madres this uh, program has benefited uh, so far 6,111 mothers y si no podemos avanzar más es por las consecuencias del bloqueo. And if we can't make further progress, it's because of the results of the impact of the, of the blockade. Es porque nos faltan recursos. Because we're, we have a scarcity of resources. Financieros y materiales. Both financial and material. Para desarrollar la infraestructura constructiva. To develop our uh, building infrastructure. Tener más cemento, uh, to, más uh, bloques. To have more cement for more blocks, uh, uh, bricks. Y construir más viviendas. And to be able to build more housing. Por eso tenemos que seguir defendiendo a Cuba y debemos estar contra el bloqueo. And that's why we must continue to defend Cuba and be against the blockade. Yeah. Aprobamos también un proyecto sobre el trabajo no remunerado. We also approved a draft measure on uh, unpaid work. Es decir, reconocer el trabajo de las amas de casa. That is to recognize the work of housewives. Y este proyecto está sentando las bases. And this uh, project is laying the groundwork. Para establecer en Cuba. To establish in Cuba. Un sistema nacional. A national system. Para el cuidado integral de la vida. For the comprehensive uh, attention or care of, of life. Se aprobaron otras medidas relacionadas con la prevención social. Other measures were approved regarding social prevention. Y la calidad en la atención a personas vulnerables. And the quality and the attention towards uh, vulnerable people in, in vulnerable situations. Desde la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas, pasen, desde la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas, Fortalecemos nuestras casas de orientación a la mujer y las familias. The uh, Federation of Cuban Women is also strengthening its, um, what is known as the houses for orient providing orientation to women. Es un espacio para la capacitación, la orientación y la ayuda especializada. It's an, an, um, an area to allow for training, education, and specialized help for women por donde pasan más de 70 mil personas todos los años. Uh, that more than 70, people go to every year. Hemos abierto recientemente consejerías para la atención a mujeres víctimas de violencia. Uh, we have opened uh, counseling centers uh, for women who are victims of uh, violence, gender violence. Y en 147 municipios también casas taller. And in uh, 147 municipalities, we've opened uh, workshop centers. Que es un espacio más pequeño, más personalizado. Which is a smaller, more specialized uh, center. Para dar atención diferenciada a estas mujeres. To give uh, specialized, differentiated attention to these, uh, these women. Contamos con un grupo de expertas. We have a group of women experts. Que contribuyen. Who contribute, un grupo de expertas que contribuye a la atención, al diseño de políticas en relación a la violencia de género. Uh, who give attention to and help design policies uh, regarding gender violence. Por ejemplo, protocolos institucionales. For example, institutional protocols. Estrategias de capacitación para el personal que brinda servicios en línea. Um, training strategy for personnel who provide online uh, services. Un mapa de servicios. A map of services. Del que de cualquier lugar de Cuba están los teléfonos y las personas pueden llamar a, a denunciar o a plantear una preocupación. Where people anywhere on the island can make a call and, and denounce a, a, you know, uh, raise a problem that, has, that they're facing. 
Ese mapa de servicio está también en una aplicación para móviles. That uh, map of services is also available through an app. Hemos establecido convenios de colaboración con el Ministerio de Justicia. Uh, we've developed an agreement of collaboration with the Ministry of Justice. Que es el organismo rector en la actualización de la legislación cubana. Which is a, a leading body in the uh, establishment of, of laws. Y eso impone entonces que estamos revisando toda la legislación. So that means that we're reviewing all legislation. Para que responda a los desafíos. To uh, take into account the, the response to the challenges. Que en materia de género. In, in the area of gender. Existen en el país. That exists in this country, in our country. De igual forma lanzamos la campaña Juntas por la No Violencia. We also launched a national campaign called Together for, for Nonviolence. Una campaña comunicacional que permite sensibilizar. It's a communicational campaign that is to help raise awareness. Y todo ello nos permitió. And all this allowed us. Que el Consejo de Ministros. Um, to, for, for the Council of Ministers. Aprobara la estrategia integral. Uh, for the Council of Ministers to approve a comprehensive strategy de prevención y atención a la violencia de género for um, prevention and attention to the question of uh, gender violence y en el escenario familiar and in the family environment. Es una norma jurídica It's a, a legal norm que abarca desde la prevención that includes prevention hasta la legislación uh, all the way to legislation. Desde lo local comunitario from the local communities hasta las grandes instituciones. To the, the highest uh, institutions. Los programas educacionales. Educational programs. Y también con el apoyo de Naciones Unidas. And also with the support of the United Nations. Agencias que existen en nuestro país. Uh, UN agencies in our country. Aprobamos también una campaña de sensibilización. We uh, um, approved a campaign of uh, uh, consciousness uh, que raising awareness. Which we call. Sin estereotipos de género. Uh, without gender stereotypes. Rompe esquemas. Breaking schemas. Cuando estén en Cuba, when you go la to Cuba, televisión cubana lo pone constantemente. You'll see it on television uh, constantly. Entonces, queremos comentarle un poquito qué está pasando con el nuevo código de las familias, con so, el proyecto. So we would like to tell you now a little bit about what's happening with the new draft families code. ¿Están de acuerdo? Terminamos aquí. What, what do you think? Should we end here or should I continue? ¿Quieren saber del código? Ajá. They want to, you want to learn about the code, right? Sí, yo se los iba a decir. I was going to tell you. <laughs> bueno. Cuba, como parte de su sistema político, democrático y participativo, somete ahora a consulta popular el Código de la Familia. Cuba, as part of its uh, democratic and participatory political system, is uh, submitting for a popular consultation its, code, its family's code um, after having subjected it to a process of specialized consultation. Lo que estamos sometiendo a consulta popular es la versión 24. Um, the version of this code that we're uh, presenting to the population is the 24th version of this document. Imagínense ustedes cuántas opiniones, cuántas experiencias ya están incorporadas en esa versión 24. You can imagine how many opinions, how many experiences have already been incorporated into that version number 24 of the Families Code. El proceso de consulta inició en el mes de febrero. The process of popular consultation began uh, this month, this past month of February. Y se realizará en más de 78 mil puntos de reunión en will, las comunidades. And will be carried out in more than 70, 78,000 meeting places across the island. La población puede llevar por escrito sus propuestas o tenerlas identificadas y exponerlas. The population can bring its proposals um, in writing or have them uh, identified and to present them. Y luego, cuando se concluya este proceso, and then later, uh, at the end of this process, podrá comprobar si efectivamente fueron incorporadas. We'll be able to verify whether those things were incorporated into what they presented.
o se tuvieron en cuenta or if they were taken into account. este proyecto de código responde al mandato constitucional this draft code um, responds to the is based on the constitutional mandate y constituye expresión de la más alta importancia que el Estado brinda a la institución familiar as an expression of the, the, high, the great importance that the state um, gives to the, the family institution y a la necesidad de transformar la legislación vigente and to the need to transform existing laws que responda a la diversidad familiar uh, that responds to the need for, to the reality of family diversity y brindar opciones and to provide options para solucionar to uh, resolve los innumerables conflictos the innumerable conflicts que existen which exist y no tienen amparo en el derecho and that are not uh, covered by laws es decir that is voy a explicarlo de una manera más práctica I'll, I'll explain it in more practical terms lo que estamos haciendo what we are doing es llevar la vida is to bring life al código into the code. Es decir, no estamos haciendo una ley We're not, uh, de developing para que después se cumpla. We're not creating a law just for it to be carried out. Estamos llevando a la ley We're bringing into the law lo que ya pasa en la vida cotidiana. What exists today in everyday life. Este proyecto This draft fortalece la responsabilidad familiar. Strengthens family responsibilities. Lo decía la hermana que hablaba ahorita. Uh, the sister who was just speaking talked about it. Y la fortalece desde el punto de vista emocional. And strengthens this from an emotional point of view. Educativo, formativo. Edu educational. Económico también. And also economic uh, point of view. Sitúa a el amor, it, a esos puentes de amor que han tomado mucha fuerza. Uh, it places love, those bridges of love that have... A la solidaridad. Uh, the, it, y, and also it, it places solidarity. Y la responsabilidad. And responsibility. En los más altos valores familiares. Among the highest family values. Se sustenta en principios rectores. It's based on leading principles que pasan por la igualdad y la no discriminación. That, in, that are based on or include equality and non-discrimination. Por la pluralidad familiar. Fam the plurality of families. Se busca un estatuto jurídico. Uh, the aim is to develop a, a, a legal statute. A los distintos modelos for, o construcciones familiares. For different family models and constructions or constructs. El principio de solidaridad y protección a los más vulnerables. The principle of solidarity and protection of those most vulnerable in society. Tanto menores como adultos mayores. Both minors as well as older adults. Ampara a las personas de la violencia familiar y la discriminación. It protects people from family violence and discrimination. La prevención de la violencia transversaliza todo el código. Uh, the opposition to fam uh, violence in the family runs throughout the code. Aunque incorpora un título a este tema. Although it gives a title to this particular topic. Es un código de oportunidades y alternativas. This is a code of opportunities and alternatives. De sumas y multiplicaciones. Of multiplying, of, of, of adding and multiplying. Que reconoce y garantiza derechos a quienes no los tenían. That recognizes and guarantees rights for those who did not have them. Pero de ninguna manera. But in no way. Afecta o limita does, los ya reconocidos para otros. Does it affect or limit the rights that are already recognized for others? No establece moldes. It does not establish molds. Ni obliga a escoger un modelo familiar. Nor it does it require anyone to choose a family model. Que no sea el deseado por cada familia. That is not the one that is desired by each family. Es un código amplio, it integral. Is, it is a broad and comprehensive code. Revolucionario, moderno. Revolutionary and modern. Desarrolla muchas instituciones familiares. It develops many family institutions. Protege la maternidad y la paternidad. It protects motherhood and fatherhood. 
y la promoción de su desarrollo responsable and the promotion of its responsible development en sinergia con el respeto a los derechos de niñas, niños y adolescentes in harmony with respect for the, the rights of uh, girls of, en el ámbito familiar of boys and teenagers in the family environment teniendo en cuenta uh, el interés superior taking into account it's the highest interests y la autonomía progresiva and, the, and gradual autonomy The, Entre las principales modificaciones, among the, uh, the main modifications that have been made, solo algunos ejemplos, just to give you a few examples, se sustituye el término de patria potestad, we replace the term uh, patria potestad, or you could translate it as parental authority, responsabilidad parental, with the term parental responsibility que implica estar apto física y psicológicamente which means to be physically and psychologically capable para garantizar y velar por los derechos to guarantee and protect the, uh, el bienestar the rights, the, the well-being y la felicidad de las hijas e hijos and the happiness of daughters and sons darles participación for children to give, uh, provide participation escucharlos to listen to them protegerlos, to protect them, brindarles amor, to bring them love, y propiciar que crezcan en un ambiente de afectuosidad, and to foster their growth and, and development in an atmosphere of affection. Otro elemento, another, la gestación solidaria. Another uh, element is uh, gestación solidaria, which could be translated as surrogate motherhood. Y se produce solo cuando una mujer And this happens when a, man, a woman es la propuesta, that this is the proposal pariente o amiga muy cercana, a relative or a close friend ustedes saben lo que es parientes. You, you know what a, a, a relative un ustedes pariente, son nuestros parientes. We, you are our family, our relatives son gente cercana well, you are people que who nos are apoya, que close. nos entiende you are close to us, you que confía en nosotros uh, who understand us, who, uh, esos son los parientes que están en el código Those are the par the relatives that are included in the, in the code. o amigos muy cercanos de quienes quieren asumir Or close friends who want to assume the, la maternidad y paternidad uh, motherhood and, and fatherhood es decir, esas mujeres que deciden gestar un bebé en su útero. And that is uh, those women who decide to give birth to a, uh, or gestate a, a baby por motivos in, altruistas in her uterus for altruistic reasons. O ajenos a cualquier tipo de retribución monetaria without, o mercantil. Without any interest, any monetary or mercantile interest. Y este proceso se autoriza únicamente. And this process is authorized only por la vía judicial through legal channels e incluye procederes médicos and it includes medical procedures a partir de las técnicas de reproducción asistida based on the techniques of assisted reproduction técnicas por cierto que están muy limitadas precisamente por el bloqueo and uh, techni techniques and methods that are in fact limit very limited because of the blockade esta institución this institution Benef beneficiará a mujeres con alguna patología médica will benefit women who uh, have faced some kind of medical pathology that prevents them from giving birth a personas estériles uh, to people who are sterile a hombres solos o parejas de hombres to single men or uh, couples uh, two men in a couple siempre que no se ponga en peligro la salud as long as life there's no risk to life de quienes intervienen en ese proceder. Uh, for those who participate in this medical procedure. También se amplían los pactos matrimoniales. Uh, we also broaden the options for marriage agreements. Aparece el régimen de separación de bienes. Uh, we establish procedures for the separation of property. Que es cuando uno de los cónyuges conserva la libre administración. Which is when one of the spouses may, has the, the, the free administration y disposición de sus bienes propios uh, in disposition of, of their own of their own property their own belongings pero también se coloca but, el régimen mixto but we also established a mixed uh, regime or mixed uh, procedure que es una sumatoria o combinación de la comunidad matrimonial which is a summer combination of, of, of the marriage community y la separación de bienes and the separation of, 
uh, belongings and property. La unión afectiva. The emotional union, the the uh, the de facto of emotional union. Se reconocerá judicialmente o por inscripción registral. Will be uh, recognized by law or through uh, registration. A dos personas que comparten un proyecto de vida en común. For two individuals who share a project, a project of life in common. De manera singular, estable y notoria durante al menos dos años. If they maintain it in a way that is uh, unique, stable, uh, during at least for at least uh, two years. Uniones de hecho existen muchas en Cuba. Uh, de facto unions uh, between individuals exist uh, in many cases in Cuba. Pero no tenían consecuencias jurídicas. But there were no legal consequences up to now. Por eso se está incorporando en el proyecto. That's why we're incorporating this into the draft code. Casarse es una opción, no una obligación. Uh, to marry is an option, it's not an obligation. Hay personas que desean contraer matrimonio. There are people who want to get married. Pero hay otras que no precisan de un documento para amarse y respetarse. But there are others who do not need a document to love and respect each other. La autonomía progresiva. Uh, the, what's known as gradual autonomy. Incorporada. Incorporates. Es la capacidad que tienen las niñas, niños y adolescentes. Is the ability of uh, girls, boys, and teenagers de ser sujetos de derecho to have uh, rights a medida que manifiestan madurez física y at, psicológica as they progressively develop physical and psychological maturity no se trata de ninguna forma it doesn't mean in any way que el menor haga prevalecer su deseo that the, the minor child imposes their uh, sino desires sino que exista respeto but it's based on respect participación participation y escucha de sus criterios and listening to their opinions para que los adultos tomemos las mejores decisiones so that adults will make the best decisions for them impone una forma más eficaz de educar it imposes a more effective form for educating pues a medida que sus competencias son mayores as their competence increases disminuye su necesidad de dirección y orientación there is less need for them to be directed and oriented y aumentan ellos la capacidad de asumir responsabilidades and they become increasingly able to assume responsibilities seguramente que todas y todos están pensando i'm sure all of you are thinking en esos momentos en que decimos in those moments when we say Imagínate qué voy a hacer, ya ellos son mayores, ya toman oh, sus propias decisiones. You know, think, well, okay, they're already older, they can make their own decisions. ¿Nos pasa o no? Does that happen or doesn't it? Termino aquí. I'll finish here. Se reconoce el derecho también de abuelas, abuelos y but, otros parientes consanguíneos. Uh, it also, the code also recognizes the rights of grandmothers, of grandfathers and other blood relatives, close blood relatives. Y personas afectivamente cercanas. And, pe pe and individuals with close emotional uh, connections. A, única, a una armónica y cercana comunicación. The right to a harmonious and, cl and close communication. Entre ellos en el entorno familiar. Uh, among them in the family environment. Por supuesto, ahora con consecuencias jurídicas. And of course now with a, a legal expression. Desarrolla las posibilidades de solución armónica. It develops the uh, possibilities for de uh, conflictos harmonious resolution of conflicts. A través de la mediación y la conciliación. Through mediation and conciliation. Expresa el derecho a una vida familiar libre de violencia. It expresses the right to a family life free from violence. E impulsa la protección en la herencia de quienes se han desempeñado como cuidadores familiares. And it establishes the protection of the in, of inheritance for those who have uh, worked as fam, as family caregivers. La Federación de Mujeres Cubanas forma parte del equipo redactor de este proyecto del Código de la Familia. The, uh, the Federation of Cuban Women is part of the team that has um, developed the uh, the family codes, the families code. Y también representación de Todas las instituciones y organizaciones de masas del país. And includes uh, mass institutions uh, and organizations throughout the country.
por lo que es el resultado de la sabiduría popular. This is the result of uh, the popular wisdom, the wisdom of the people. Estamos entonces en la consulta popular. So now we're going to be going to a popular consultation. Y esperemos entonces cuando concluya la consulta. And we're expecting that when this process of consultation is completed. Todas las modificaciones que se harán. All, all, we can expect all the different modifications that will be carried out. Para someter a referéndum popular. To present this as a whole for a popular referendum. Yo voto sí por el código de las familias. I will vote yes for the uh, families code. Y estoy segura que la mayoría de las mujeres cubanas también votarán sí. And I am certain that the majority of Cuban women will also vote yes. Porque es un código para todas las familias. Because it is a code for all families. Porque respeta todos los derechos. It respects all the rights. Para todas las personas. For all people. Y porque como dijo Fidel. Because as Fidel said. La revolución tiene en las mujeres cubanas hoy día un verdadero ejército. Fidel said the revolution has in, in Cuban women today a genuine Una army. impresionante fuerza política. An impressive political power. Y por eso decimos. And that is why we say. Que la revolución es sencillamente invencible. The revolution is simply invincible. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joanne Kuniansky, and I'm part of a national slate of Socialist Workers Party candidates uh, running for office around the country. And one of the things that we have absolute confidence in is the capacity of workers and farmers in this country to act in our own interests. And the Cuban Revolution and what you've just described is a real example of that. And before I ask a question, I just wanted to say that what you raised is something that we hear and discuss all the time. In the United States today, because it's a capitalist country based on exploitation, women are being driven out of the workforce. Participation of women has gone down. Child care is almost inaccessible, and having an affordable family is a real question. So what I wanted to ask you is, in this uh, families code that's being debated and discussed, if we could get a feel for what some of the initial discussions are like in the popular consultation that is going on. You know, what are workers um, adding and um, discussing about the issues that you raise? Do you want to do more than one question at a time? Take a group, or how do you want to handle it? Well, we took a couple of questions. OK, so uh, if you can come here, uh, talk to me where I have the mic. And um, yeah, if we can just have have, have questions. Only the time is really limited, so if you could just uh, question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Regina. I'm from Los Angeles. Um, I have more of a logistical question. I wanted to know roughly how what the how long the process is of popular consultation. Like after you put out your proposal, how long would it take to get your answer back? And how do people submit their answer? Thank you. Mm Buenos días. Bueno, un poco que para responder algunas de las interrogantes que se nos hacían, un poco para también profundizar en el contenido del código. Uh, to uh, answer some of the questions and to deepen a little bit more what's involved in the family's code. A ver, voy a empezar eh, con relación al tiempo de la consulta popular, que fue la segunda pregunta. I'm going to start with the second question, the... Uh, Start with the second question, the question of the popular uh, consultation. El proceso de consulta comenzó el primero de febrero y se extiende hasta el 30 de abril. It started on February 1st and it's going to continue until April, the end of April. 
Y como se refería en la presentación, se crearon más de 78 mil puntos de reuniones. And as it was explained in the presentation, there were over 78,000 meetings. Reuniones que se organizan a nivel de la comunidad. Meetings that are organized at the community level. Y donde todas las personas pueden participar en estas reuniones y dar sus opiniones, ya sean orales o escritas. And where everybody can participate in the meeting, either uh, with written questions or uh, speaking. Es un proceso que no que permite que las personas den la opinión, es decir, no se trata de rebatir ni de querer convencerlas, sino de escuchar las opiniones que dan y todas las opiniones se tienen en cuenta. It's not a question of debating or arguing, but where everybody can have their opinion heard and everybody gets a chance to give their opinion. Como se explicaba una vez terminada la reunión, once the meeting is over, las personas que dieron su opinión tienen el derecho de revisar en el cuerpo del acta que se levanta en la reunión Everybody has the right to have listed in the minutes of the meeting that are filed afterwards. Si se tuvo en cuenta la opinión como la dio allí en la reunión. If their opinion is down the way they had expressed it. Esa opinión puede ser una propuesta de modificación. That opinion can be a proposal for a de modification. Inclusión de un nuevo artículo. Including a new article. O de eliminación de un artículo. Or eliminating an article that's in the code. Por lo tanto, una vez terminado este proceso de consulta popular, so once this uh, popular consultation is, is finished, la comisión redactora evalúa la posibilidad de incluir o no estos términos o modificaciones que se han ido proponiendo en estos 78 mil puntos de reunión. The editing commission takes a look and decides which of those proposals they think should be included um, in the final draft of the family's code. Por supuesto, una vez redactado sería la versión número 25, se pone también a consulta con el pueblo, es decir, se circula para que la población conozca y pueda eh, revisar si fueron en, tenidas en cuenta o no sus opiniones. So that next version, which would be the 25th version, would then be distributed so that everybody can take a look at it and, and, and see if they agree with the modifications that have been made or if they have other proposals. Quiere decir que una vez que se lleve ya a referendo popular, ya tiene todo el conocimiento de la población en general. So then when it finally gets to the referendum, it'll be, uh, have, everybody will have knowledge of what's, what they're voting on. De igual manera, se han habilitado direcciones electrónicas. There's also electronic versions of this. Por el propio Ministerio de Justicia y de igual manera por la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas, los Comités de Defensa de la Revolución through the Ministry of Justice, through the Federation of Cuban Women, through the Committees for the Defense of the Revolution. Que permite a las personas dar sus opiniones, ya sea en la reunión o de igual manera, de manera, eh, por estos correos electrónicos. So that means that people can also give their opinions through the in-person consultations, or they can do it through this, um, the uh, internet version. Te ayudo. <laughs> I'll give you a hand. Sí. Y una vez que se concluya la consulta popular, se vuelve a llevar a la Asamblea Nacional, se aprueba en la Asamblea Nacional y entonces que va a consulta. Eso no demora más de dos meses. Okay. Porque so ya... Ay. Once the, the popular consultation is done, then it goes to the National Assembly. Then it, once it's approved by the National Assembly, then it will go to the National Referendum. Porque ya se le entregó a la Asamblea Nacional del Poder Popular. So it's already been turned over to the National Assembly of People's Power. La marcha de ese proceso hasta el momento. The progress of this uh, consultation up to this time. Es decir, no se va a esperar a concluir la consulta. It, we're not going to wait to finish the consultations para ir trabajando ya en las modificaciones. To begin working on the modifications to the Que uh, sea draft, necesario hacer. The ones that are necessary to do. Entonces, estamos ya en ese proceso. So we're now in that process. Y con relación a los temas que más se han discutido en la, en la consulta popular. In terms of the uh, themes that have been most discussed in the popular consultation. Tiene que ver justamente con los que les explicaba. It has to do with exactly what I have uh, just explained. Porque me detuve justamente en esos. I, you know, spent more time precisely on those points. 
que son los que más inquietudes han generado. That have uh, more, uh, raised more doubts among people. Ahí faltaría, por ejemplo, el cambio eh, o la posibilidad de cambiar el orden de los apellidos. For example, the possibility of changing the order of last names. Es decir, que siempre tenemos como primer apellido el de nuestros padres. You know, our custom is that the first last name is always the one of our fathers. Puede seguir haciendo así. It can continue being like that. Pero quien quiera poner como primer apellido el de la madre. And, but whoever wants to have as their first last name, the last name of their mother. También lo puede hacer. They can also do that. Y cuando uno lo escucha así de primera instancia, pareciera que son cosas de feminismo. When you first hear it, it sounds like something that's from feminism. Pero no lo son. But that's not what it is. Son eh, temas que tienen que ver con las familias. These are topics that have to do with the families. Hay familias que su apellido es único. There are some families that their ejemplo, last name is unique, for example. Y no quieren perder el apellido. And they don't want to lose that last name. Entonces, se da la posibilidad cuando eso suceda y cualquier otro asunto interno de la familia que lo puedan hacer. So that means that when they want to do that for any internal reason of the family, they can do it. He participado en reuniones de consulta popular. I've participated in many of the popular cons consultative meetings. Donde incluso quieren que sea retroactivo that they even want it to be retroactive, the new law. Es decir, familias que ya perdieron el apellido. Families that had already lost the last name. Y quieren ahora virar para atrás. And they want to go back. Para recuperarlo. To recover that last name. Son cosas que pasan en la vida cotidiana. These are things that happen in daily life. Ese es uno de los temas que se ha estado valorando y discutiendo. That's one of the things that we've been evaluating, evaluating evaluating and discussing la posibilidad que tienen las abuelas y los abuelos the possibility of the grandmothers and grandfathers la protección a las personas mayores en la vejez the protection of older people as they get older el tema de los cuidadores the question of guardians and caretakers la violencia de género uh, gender violence que tiene consecuencias jurídicas that has uh, judicial consequences en casi todas las instituciones familiares in all, all, all of the family institutions son de los, el matrimonio entre dos personas the question of uh, marriage between two people son de los temas que más las personas están preguntando those are the questions that people are asking most about no sé si satisfacemos y si no esperan a mañana que viene Yamila. I don't know if I've satisfied your uh, Yamila question, but es tomorrow Yamila is coming. Miembro del Comité Nacional de la Federación de Mujeres Cubanas, una jurista que ustedes ya conocen. She's a, a legal expert that many of you know. She's a member of the national organization. Que estará uh, aquí también mañana. And she's going to be here tomorrow. Pero era una broma. Pueden seguir preguntando. It's, that's just a joke. You can keep Hasta on asking. que yo pueda responder y mis compañeras. Y, y los compañeros de la misión que también ya lo han estudiado. We'll answer to the best of our ability and also the compañeros from the Cuban mission here. They've also uh, been studying this question and can participate. Lo tenemos digital. Se lo podemos dar a todos los que quieran. We have this also in digital form. We can give it to anybody that wants a copy. Está enumerado párrafo a párrafo. It's list, it, it's, uh, it's numbered paragraph by paragraph. Para facilitar la consulta. To make it easier for the consultations. Before we uh, take some more questions, I just want to sort of give you where we're at, where we're at uh, time-wise. Um, in about 15 minutes, they're going to start setting up for lunch, which uh, is provided to everybody here. Uh, we want to continue this wonderful uh, panel. And uh, so we're going to probably take a couple of more questions. And then we have another presentation uh, also. So we want to get all of that in. But people should be prepared uh, for, a, um, uh, for, the, for the lunch being served around 1 o'clock. And also, the uh, 
at one o'clock, but during the lunch break, we're gonna be showing the wonderful film, uh, Cuba in Africa. We have the director, Nagash Abdurrahman here, uh, who will introduce it. It's a short film, it's won a lot of awards. So people that wanna see that, the screening room downstairs holds 50 people, line up uh, when we break, and we'll let you in, and once you're in, there's nobody else gonna be in during the showing of the film, and you can come back up and get your lunch at that time. I think that's what we're trying to do, so. Thank you. So, Mark, you want to? What up? Okay. Right. Mark from with Regina from Los Angeles, the Hands Off Cuba Committee. Uh, thank you very much for a very detailed explanation. And we look forward when our delegation from LA comes to Cuba for the May Day and other activities, learning a lot more. My question is about the family code and the Cubans who live abroad, the diaspora of Cubans, and how they are participating in the discussions on the family code and bringing them more into the movement of solidarity with Cuba, just as the Puentes de Amor caravans and other activities have done. It's a brilliant move. Perhaps you could explain more how it's being organized and the responses that you're getting. Thank you. Hi, uh, Alison Bodine here uh, from the Fire This Time Movement for Social Justice in Vancouver, Canada. I actually have a question to relay from online. I wanna let people know uh, that we are live streaming and so there's all of us in the room and right now there's about a hundred people online as well so congratulations and let's keep sharing that link lots of interest especially about the family code in the chat here online and someone is wondering uh, if there's anything in the family code about the responsibility of men uh, for caretaking of family and children uh, i just want uh, Steve Clark from the uh, Active in the Cuba Sea Coalition here in New York. Uh, I just wanted to ask something about the question of uh, adoption in the family code, both from the standpoint of the rights and equality of uh, those who uh, want to adopt and from the standpoint of the conditions uh, of, the, uh, of the children who, for whatever reason, have lost their biological parents or are not living with their biological parents. Bueno, eh, sobre la primera pregunta, no está establecido que los cubanos que ya no tienen la nacionalidad cubana participen de los debates. Es decir, no se han organizado debates, pero pueden participar porque nosotros tenemos, como explicó nuestra compañera, correos electrónicos habilitados en muchas instituciones de Cuba para que todo el que quiera dar una opinión la pueda dar. We, we, Eso no, en esa, esas opiniones que se están dando por la, eh, por correo electrónico también se tienen en cuenta. Así que de alguna manera también pueden participar. Los cubanos que están en el exterior, eh, en contratos de trabajo, eh, pueden también cuando regresen a Cuba dar sus opiniones sobre el, sobre el proyecto del código. The uh, Cubans outside the country that are no longer Cuban citizens there's no mechanism for them to participate in the uh, in-person consultations. But like anybody else, they can use the um, email that's set up with every institution where they're able to give their opinions. Um, for Cubans that are on work outside the country, um, they're able to participate through their workplace. Me disculpan. El, el tema que preguntaba alguien en el chat de la participación de los hombres en la responsabilidad en el hogar. The question that's from the chat about the responsibility of men for the work in the homes. Tenemos que decir que desde el código vigente. We have to say that in the existing code. En el año 1975. 75. Um, in that code since 1975, 
Se establece las relaciones iguales a lo interno del hogar. It establishes equal relations within the home. Hay un programa de maternidad y paternidad responsable. There's a program of maternity, uh, of responsible maternity and paternity. Desde el año 2003, Since 2003, también los padres tienen derecho a esa licencia de maternidad para que cuiden a los hijos. The fathers also have the right to maternity leave to take care of the children. Se pueden quedar en los hospitales al cuidado de sus hijos enfermos. They can stay in the hospitals taking care of their sick children. Y en este nuevo código, and in the new code, pues también establece esa responsabilidad paterna. It also establishes this paternal responsibility. Ahora falta que lo logremos. Uh, now the question is to actually carry it out. Yo creo que hemos avanzado muchísimo. I think we've made big advances. Ya usted va a cualquier escuela cubana. You can go to any Cuban school. Y ve lo mismo a las madres que a los padres llevando a los niños. You can see the mothers and the fathers bringing the children to school. O las madres dejando un papelito encima de la mesa de la casa. Or the mothers leaving a note on top of the table at home. Recoge el niño a las cuatro. Pick up the kid at four. Está el arroz en la lata. Pones la olla rosera. You know, this is when you put on the rice to boil and, you know, other instructions. Haz like la that. comida y recoge la ropa. You know, go uh, cook the food and then go fold the clothes. Hemos avanzado, pero falta muchísimo en ese sentido. We've made advances, but there's a lot more to do in that No sense. basta con el código. The code's not enough. Si no lo logramos entender. If we don't achieve and people understand Si no eliminamos esa división sexual del trabajo. If we don't eliminate that sexual uh, uh, division of work. Y yo confío en que sí lo lograremos. But I'm confident that we are going to achieve that. Llevará tiempo. It'll take time. Pero lo lograremos. But we will achieve it. Y en relación a la adopción. In relationship to adoption. Está bien eh, organizado, está diseñado en el código cómo es la adopción. It's very well organized. Um, en Cuba in hay the code. resolución del Ministerio de Educación que establece cómo hacerlo. There's, uh, you know, regulations established by the Ministry of Education and how to carry this out. Establece en Cuba muchísimas normas eh, y se valora mucho la cualidad de las personas. There are all kinds of norms. They evaluate the quality of the person. Para lograr la adopción. To be able to uh, carry out the adoption. Lo que nos cuesta mucho trabajo y hay listas amplias de personas que esperan por adoptar. Uh, what, what is a challenge is that there's long lists of people that uh, want to adopt. Porque no tenemos niños abandonados. Because we don't have abandoned children. Porque no tenemos niños de la calle. We don't have children living in the street. Porque las familias asumen a sus hijos. Because the families take responsibility Incluso for their children. Incluso aquellos que en ocasiones tenemos que llevar a las casas de niños sin amparo familiar. Even those that we have to take uh, for the homes for uh, children that, you know, like foster children that, that aren't being taken care of by their families. Hay una preocupación por muchas personas si las parejas del mismo sexo There's a lot of uh, doubts that people have raised in terms of uh, same-sex uh, marriages, couples. Y está ampliamente recogido cómo van a ser las técnicas de reproducción asistida. And there's a lot of information in the code on assisted reproduction, that what's involved in that. Y hoy en Cuba una persona sola puede adoptar, no importa su orientación sexual. And in Cuba today, a single person can adopt. It doesn't matter what their sexual orientation is. Ese es uno de los temas que preocupa a muchas personas. That's one of the themes that has uh, been a concern of many people. Catherine Hall Trujillo is founder of the Birthing Project USA and is ambassador to the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. She, she's an expert on the Cuban health system and at Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Sciences. 
Well, good afternoon. <laughs> and um, I'm going to be very um, brief in what I have to say, but I think it's really, really appropriate in terms of the uh, presentation we just heard. Um, Birthing Project USA is probably the only grassroots community-based African-American global maternal and child health project on the planet. We're about 34 years old, and I'm considered one of the um, founding mothers of the Black maternal and infant health movement that's been going on since about 1988. Um, my relationship to Cuba is I was there when Elion's grandparents, grandmothers, invited some grandparents from the United States to come to Cuba and see how children live in Cuba. And while I was there, I found out that Reverend Walker and IFCO Pastors for Peace was just getting ready to uh, take advantage of the 500 medical school scholarships um, for students in the United States to go to Cuba and become doctors, absolutely free if they wanted to do that because they wanted to come back and work in organizations like, like mine. Our organization was a full comprehensive uh, clinic in Sacramento, California, but all the providers were midwives. I'm a midwife. We could not afford to hire a doctor. Medical students would come and volunteer at our clinic and they would say as they were leaving uh, for the program, their program in the US, when I become a real doctor, I'm going to come back and work here. But when they became real doctors, they owed at least $350,000. They couldn't come and work at my clinic or any clinic like mine because we all practically volunteered. So I think I was there when Reverend Walker got there with the first group of students. And I would like to say that now we do have a medical director at the Birthing Project who was in that first class of graduates. And because of our exposure to being a part of the healthcare program in Cuba, the Birthing Project is now in 13 countries. And many of those are, uh, the medical services are led by students who were educated in Cuba through that same program. For example, like Honduras. But what I want to say as a part of the medical, of the family code, is that the great gift that Cuba has given us is the work that they have done around Black maternal and child health. Uh, when I started working in the field, it was an assumption that there was something wrong with Black people, which is why they could not have healthy birth outcomes. Since I have been in Cuba, everything that I have been taught as a person born in the United States about black people is upside down. Cuba has the highest literacy rate in the Western hemisphere. It's not that black people are stupid and can't learn. Cuba has one of the lowest rates of violence in the world. And Cuba is the best place on the planet for a black baby to be born. Those of you who know the United States know that if black people in the United States were a country, we would rank number 76 of all the countries. But the real thing about Cuba that fascinates most people who are in maternal and child health is that Cuba, as long as I can remember, has been ahead of the United States in terms of birth outcomes. And so the, I, the question is, how can a developing country with a blockade on its neck still be better than the United States with all the technology they have in terms of helping babies be born healthy and live to year one and moms to be born healthy. And what Cuba has done in along with opening their door, their medical school doors to our medical stu school students, they have also opened their school of public health and allow me to facilitate a class for US policymakers administrators, providers, community health workers, people who are trying to figure out what can we do with these fabulous young US 
doctors that have been trained in Cuba to come back and work in the United States in a system that supports what they're learning. And the thing that really, and I promise not to cry, <laughs> the thing that really touches my heart is as bad as we treat Cuba, Cuba has opened the door to help us learn how to make sure that our babies are born healthy. But the part that breaks my heart is that the birth rate for Cuban women is going down because of the impact of the blockade, where women have to stop and think whether or not they can literally be mothers because of all the things that we know it, that, that they don't have access to the things that they need in order to do the medical care, to do the education, to feed themselves. We have come up with a system that really tries to kill people by denying them the things they need for life. But in the work that I do with my colleagues here and the people who are here today, is that it's so unfair that they are teaching us how to live at the same time they have to make decisions about whether or not they can bring life into the world. And so when we're thinking about what we can do, and I get an opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you that are modeling the way that even when you're deprived of the things that you need, as long as you hang on to your stubbornness, your vision, and continue to model the way to those of us because the black, inf the black birth rate is also going down in the US because black women are afraid to have babies because they think they will not live through the process. They think so for both. One is because we have to learn to be as strong as you Cubans are in terms of remembering the things that really give us life and that as long as life is still coming, we should honor it. And we should also find a way to end this horrible blockade because you don't have to bear the burden by yourself. And every single thing that you have done that uplifts women uplifts the community. So I wanna end by saying the things that we learn, we're learning from you is that here in the United States, we treat maternal care in a vacuum. And what you're demonstrating is we really need a real health care system because what happens to a woman when she's pregnant is not as important as what happens to a woman before she gets pregnant. You also, you also invested in education so that people actually have the facts and are able to participate in their own government. And more than that, what you're teaching us is that we have to have a sense of belonging a belonging to a country and belonging to a world community. And so it, we get an opportunity, I get an opportunity today to say thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you that keep modeling the way and the impact that you've had here in the United States and around the world on making sure that women and babies are healthy. Thank you. Well, we just wanna, we wanna thank you. We wanna thank our Cuban sisters from the Federation Cuba's always been an inspiration and hope and has intentionally given life to many revolutions around the world that are lighthouses. And so we just wanna thank you for inventing the present future of our generations. And so we wanna give you a small token of our affection. Um, it says, we dare to invent the future, which is a quote of Thomas Sankara and Cuba has dared to invent the future for generations and poor people and working class people. And as you said, women have made that process invincible. And so we thank you.